Vibe coding might not have fully come to the enterprise yet, but AI-powered coding is definitely already solving enterprise software challenges. Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief. At this stage, AI-powered coding is undeniably one of the most powerful and increasingly mainstream use cases for AI and this early generation of agents that are starting to be deployed to production. In the consumer realm, obviously, we've talked a ton over the last few months about vibe coding. And this is obviously a big tent with some loose terminology that includes both AI assistant companies that are used by existing software engineers to improve their processes, take certain types of burdensome activities off their plate so they can be more focused on higher order issues. Vibe coding also, however, is about bringing new people into the coding sphere, allowing people who weren't technical before be able to use English as their new coding language to build applications. This has been an incredible trend that is not only impressive for the speed at which it's happening, but also in that it is the use case of AI that opens up other use cases of AI. The more that AI is able to code, the more it's able to use code to solve other problems. These tools have become so ubiquitous, in fact, that they've also been at the center of the question of whether AI is going to have a negative impact on jobs. You've probably seen that Federal Reserve chart of the massive decrease in software development job postings from its COVID peak to now, And yet if there has been one area where it felt like AI tools and vibe coding specifically really wasn't up to the task, it was in the context of the enterprise. The issues have been numerous. Too short context windows to not be able to handle legacy code bases. Design patterns that aren't optimized for many contributors who can come in and out of projects. All of the issues replete with big burdensome legacy code bases. This is not really what these vibe coding tools were designed for, and so their traction and relevance inside the enterprise has been a little limited. Which is not to say that AI coding isn't having a big impact for organizations that have thrown themselves into it. The CEOs of both Microsoft and Google have claimed that as much as 30% of their code is produced by AI, and Amazon staff are reportedly putting pressure on management to provide internal access to Cursor as a matter of urgency. And for as much as the conversation around AI and coding has led to a conversation around job replacement, when one starts to dig in, we're actually finding quite a few examples of stories of where AI and AI coding tools specifically aren't just being used to do things that were annoying before, but are actually opening up possibilities that were literally impossible before. AI's ability to ingest a huge amount of data is intersecting strongly with financial firms in Wall Street. Logistics companies are developing AI systems to optimize supply chains like never before. And as the models improve, we're starting to see these big, not previously possible things come to the realm of AI coding as well. Following the release of Anthropic's Claude Opus 4 last month, and you will remember that Anthropic's Claude models have been the go-to for developers for some time now, one veteran developer on Reddit said the model had managed to fix their white whale bug that had cost them hundreds of hours over several years. The post reads, Background, I'm a C++ dev with 30 plus years experience, ex-FANG staff engineer. I'm generally the person on the team that other developers come to after they struggled with a problem for a week, and I would solve it while they're standing in my office. But today, I was humbled by Claude Opus 4. I gave it my white whale bug which arose from a re-architecting refactor that was done four years ago. The original refactor spanned around 60,000 lines of code, and it fixed a whole slew of problems, but it created a problem in an edge case when a particular shader was used in a particular way. It used to work, then we re-architected and refactored, and it no longer worked. I've been playing on and off trying to find it, and must have spent 200 hours on it over the last few years. It's one of those issues that's very annoying, but not important enough to drop everything to investigate. I worked with Claude Code running Opus for a couple of hours. I gave it access to the old code, as well as the new code, and told it to go find out how this was broken in the refactor. And it found it. Turns out that the reason it worked in the old code was merely by coincidence of the old architecture, and when we changed the architecture, that coincidence wasn't taken into account. So this wasn't merely an introduced logic bug, it found that the changed architecture design didn't accommodate this old edge case. This took around a total of 30 prompts and one restart. I've also previously tried GPT 4.1, Gemini 2.5, and Claude 3.7, and none of them could make any progress whatsoever. But Opus 4 finally found it. And so on this theme of AI not just helping people, but solving problems that were somewhat unsolvable before, today in the Wall Street Journal, we have another one of those stories. The WSJ is reporting that Morgan Stanley has used AI to solve one of the biggest problems for these legacy code bases, 
which is updating legacy programs that were written in COBOL. If you are younger or not a professional programmer, you likely have never had the joy of dealing with COBOL. The programming language was first developed in 1959 and was fairly ubiquitous during the early days of computing. Back during that era, computerized systems were so expensive that they were only deployed against some of the highest value use cases across society. Think banking databases, air traffic control, and nuclear facilities. This slowly expanded out over the decades, but remained an extremely high-ticket item. Until the mid-1980s with the first personal computers, essentially every computerized system in the world was programmed in this language. The language is dense, monolithic, and difficult to use even for experts. It became obsolete by the 1990s with much better programming languages coming along, but many of the systems that used COBOL were so critical that they couldn't easily be replaced. In fact, there's been a persistent fear that with the retirement of COBOL developers, it would become essentially impossible to maintain these systems, let alone embark on rewriting of the programs. One area where this language is still omnipresent is in banking infrastructure, and those critical systems were viewed by some as a ticking time bomb. Morgan Stanley, however, has taken on the Goliath project of rewriting all of their COBOL systems into modern language with the help of AI. Using an in-house fine-tune of OpenAI's models, the bank created a system that can translate legacy code into plain English specs that developers can use to rewrite it. According to the company's global head of technology, Mike Peasy, since the AI's introduction in January, it's reviewed 9 million lines of code and saved developers 280,000 hours. IBM, which was a major provider for the mainframes that used COBOL in the early days, have been working on their own AI systems for migrating the language into Java. To give a sense of scale of the problem, IBM's pitch was that their coding assistant could cut the task of updating legacy systems down to one or two years rather than several years. But that tool hasn't emerged thus far, so Morgan Stanley built their own. PZ said, We found that building it ourselves gave us certain capabilities that we're not really seeing in some of the commercial products. He said that off-the-shelf tools might evolve to deliver those capabilities, but, quote, we saw the opportunity to get the jump early. The journal writes, Morgan Stanley was able to train the tools on its own codebase, including languages that are no longer or never were in widespread use. Now the company's roughly 15,000 developers based around the world can use it for a range of tasks, including translating legacy code into plain English specs, isolating sections of existing code for regulatory inquiries and other asks, or even fully translating smaller sections of legacy code into modern code. Now, the tool is technically capable of rewriting code automatically, but it doesn't necessarily know how to make it efficient or take advantage of the features of modern languages. That's why humans are still in the loop, and largely using the AI as a parser to understand the functionality of the legacy code, rather than paying highly skilled technical experts that know how to read that legacy code to painstakingly write up specs, Morgan Stanley is using AI to automate that process. PZ said that he's not expecting to see smaller headcounts in his software engineering department because of AI. Instead, he anticipates having a lot more code being produced. The company currently has hundreds of AI use cases in production, aimed at all manner of growth and efficiency targets. And thanks to this AI moonshot of rewriting their entire legacy code base, these AI automations can now be deployed against modern code rather than programs that were written decades ago. PZ said, You're always modernizing in tech. Today, with AI, this becomes even more important. So to recap, this problem of these legacy code bases was so big, hairy, and tractable difficult that it has been kicked down the can for literally decades at this point because no one wants to take the time to just fix it. However, at some point, we were going to get to a time when no one even really knew how to interact with these languages anymore, and we would have been up the proverbial creek without a paddle at that point. Even in this very incremental version that doesn't do the full code translation automatically, you're still talking about a financial giant saying that they've saved 280,000 human hours this year. Vibe coding specifically and AI coding tools in general may not have fully infiltrated the enterprise yet, but a few more stories like this and you better believe that they're going to get there soon. For now though, that is going to do it for this sort of case study version of the AI Daily Brief. Appreciate you listening or watching as always, and until next time, peace.